We're in the depths of the Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas. We've gone underground with Mr. Underground himself, the co-founder and CEO of Indiegogo, Slava Rubin. Slava, are you blowing up CES? I mean, it's really exciting. Uh, last year was our first time at CES, and uh, this year we've grown many multiples, and we have, I think, over 40 campaigns so far that we've found that have funded uh, like $15 million that are all around CES, so it's really exciting. We're actually uh, the key sponsor for all the emerging technologies in uh, Eureka Park, which is called the Indiegogo Zone. Well, this is where we are. We're in Eureka Park, which they've somehow put underneath the Venetian. Very hard place to find, of course, Indiegogo and Slava Rubin. You guys aren't hard to find. What are you most excited about that you're showing off uh, this week at CES? In, yeah. in terms of your, I guess it's not really your companies, it's partners, people using your platform to fund. Sure, I mean, there's, like I said, dozens of different campaigns, but uh, let's just mention a couple that are interesting, very hot right now here at CES. One is called Pinono. Uh, which is a ball that takes uh, a picture, 360 degree picture. They've raised over a million dollars already. It's like a 108 megabyte pixel picture. It's like absolutely incredible. Uh, you have to check it out. You throw yeah, it up. Yeah, I've seen it. You throw it up in the air. And, and it takes it... picture 360 degrees. And yeah. you can see all, it's amazing. How much? Um, they've raised over a million. And I think it's uh, $535 is the holiday special. Wow. And then another really cool campaign is called Airtame. And it's an HDMI wireless dongle, basically think Chromecast with many more features. And they're uh, crushing it as well. Both of those campaigns are open right now. I was intrigued by uh, Upglass, yeah. a kind of uh, a Google Glass. Are they a competitor or a partner? Um, yeah, I mean, you'd have to ask them. I mean, there's all these innovative projects. I mean, there's door openers, there's pet projects, there's all kinds of cool stuff. So, more broadly, Slava, you haven't been on the show before. We've, we've talked about you coming on uh, TechCrunch TV. Are you guys blowing up capitalism? You may be blowing up CES, but are you changing the very nature of investment and, and, and how to do startups? You know, the reason we started Indiegogo, when we came up with the idea in 2006 and we launched the industry in 2008, was because we were just frustrated at trying to raise money using the internet. And we thought, why is it that access to capital was always all about the gatekeeper? yet more, many other industries were starting to get democratized. So we just thought, why not naively create a platform where you can raise any money for any idea? So are we blowing up capitalism? I wouldn't say that. I would say we're finding out how to use technologies and innovative things to move it forward. Give me some numbers uh, in terms of people raising money on your platform. How much money has been raised today? Sure, so we, uh, we're gonna turn six years old in just a few days. And uh, we now distribute millions of dollars every week around the world. Uh, we're sending money to about 70 to 100 countries a week, and it's uh, pretty exciting. There's been some controversy recently, Slava, about certain um, campaigns for stuff that people aren't comfortable with. Do you think you should be censoring what people raise money for on your network, on your platform, or is, it really, um, is that not really your business? Yeah, I mean, we take a very clear stand on that. We're a completely open platform where anybody can raise money for any idea as long as it's within the laws. And uh, yeah, I mean, imagine Google telling you whether or not you're allowed to have a website or not. We really think it's the crowd that should decide. And if the crowd doesn't like it, don't fund it. And if the crowd likes it, fund it. What's so good about the crowd, Slava? It's really powerful to have, instead of one person, one decision maker, you know, one banker, one VC, one person with a lot of money getting to decide if you get to have that money you want, it's really nice to have the market decide. And something like Indiegogo creates the ultimate market, as you say, capitalism, supply and demand coming together. People like Jason Calacanis have suggested that the crowd always isn't very smart. And a lot of these people putting money into Indiegogo campaigns really don't know what they're doing and they're going to lose their money. How would you respond to that? Well, I think Jason's probably referring to equity crowdfunding and the potential of getting profit in return. Uh, as of yet, that doesn't exist on Indiegogo. It's not legal yet in terms of the Jobs Act. It probably will happen in 2014. But I think that it's uh, really great to have anybody have the opportunity to fund or in the future invest in any idea they want. Imagine a world where people say you're not sophisticated enough to have a driver's license. I mean, it's crazy. Anybody should be able to have a driver's license. You just have to pass your test. And, uh, you know, on Indiegogo, it just gives an opportunity for anybody to fund any idea. We had a young woman on the show a few weeks ago, Heather Schlegel, who raised, I think, $40,000 to make a, a TV series about uh, the future of money. 
Do you see Indiegogo as critical in terms of reinventing the, the creative industries, film, books, music? So we're open to absolutely any idea. And the way we break that down is to three major areas. Number one is creative, like you just mentioned. Number two is entrepreneurial, which is a lot of these CES projects. And number three is cause, so nonprofit and personal cause. And we think all three of those major pillars fall within what is possible for funding. So absolutely, I think Indiegogo can help push forward innovation, funding, and distribution for creatives. Slava, do you have a favorite pillar? A favorite pillar? I like it all. It's like asking No, you can't kids. say that. You, I absolutely do say that. You're not going to tell me that it's like all your kids. Have you got three kids? I have no real kids, but Indiegogo is definitely my baby and all the different campaigns are definitely ones that I root for. So there's no particular sector of the economy that you think really more than anything else needs the Indiegogo kind of business model? I think the beautiful thing is the entree into Indiegogo can be whichever entree you got, which was community project, a film project, a cancer research project, but you know what? People are complicated and they have disposable income and their share of wallet, they start finding out other things they want to fund. And because once you learn about how complicated these people are, you can start personalizing the experience for them so they get a much better crowdfunding experience on Indiegogo. How big can Indiegogo get, Slava? You know, I think that it's a rare opportunity where we were able to start a company that was able to help start an industry that potentially can change the world. I'd like to be around 100 years from now with Indiegogo. You personally? Or? Whether personally as well as Indiegogo, I think whether it's Bitcoin is the new currency or the moon is the new geography, I think access to what capital... What do you mean the moon is the new geography? You know, like people say, oh, we're now accessible in China, we're now accessible in no, Australia. So if one day the moon is a new geography that people want to use and the moon right. has a different currency, you know, the idea is that access to capital, I feel, is a problem that is not going away and it's not a trend and there's a good chance that it could be around for a very long time. So what you're saying is you can get significantly bigger, seriously bigger. Um, I think there's that opportunity. We need to execute and make sure that we think about one customer at a time and we have more Pinonos and Airtames and Glassdoor and all these campaigns. How do you do that? Because you obviously have competition as well. For us, it's really about making sure we're standing to what we believe in. We're constantly innovating. A really good example of that is I didn't uh, mention is just today we're announcing our Indiegogo Outpost, which is you get all the benefits of Indiegogo, but you get to keep your own brand and your own traffic. So you actually, some of the different com uh, campaigns have been asking, hey, can we do this on our own site? Can we customize a little bit? So we're creating more innovation, which says, hey, you get the benefit of your own brand, you get all of your own traffic, you get the benefit of our platform and our audience. So it's a win-win. And what's the model? Do you want to become, I mean, what company that's been very successful do you see um, as sort of an ideal? Is it Google? Um, well, I don't, from the standpoint a that platform, Google, right? yeah, Google is definitely a platform. I love the fact that they're completely open. It's all about data. It's all about algorithms. So very much the same in terms of that philosophy. We also have much of a marketplace ethos. So in the, in the vein of like an eBay, uh, supply and demand and trying to find both sides. So, um, you know, the cool thing is we're really paving a new road. I know in the early days in 2008 and 2009 when I was pitching investors or even potentially customers, everybody thought we were nuts. And now it's starting to catch up with itself and people are starting to understand what's possible. So I think it's super exciting. I would compare it to maybe 2003, 2004 in social media uh, where that was at 10 years ago. And what, what were you in 2003? Surely not friends then. Um, I was on Friendster. I probably was on MySpace by then no, as well. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, are you? What, what are you the equivalent of Indiegogo? Are you the? You're not the Friendster. Oh, well, I don't know what we're the equivalent of. I'm just comparing it to the industry. Um, you know, we're just taking it one customer at a time. Well, finally, finally, Slava, one customer at a time, and you can't ignore this question. Your very, very favorite Indiegogo campaign. One campaign that you just adore, that you think was brilliant, that, that exemplifies why your platform is the future. Absolutely. I think the campaign that is absolutely the best is, I think you're going to be writing a book hopefully soon, and it's when you launch a book on Indiegogo, <laughs> and we will help get you lots of money. Will you be the first funder? Absolutely. Slava Rubin, ever the salesman. Pleasure, honor, and when you go seriously public, I'm going to be coming to you for funding.